Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So uh, today I saw a video by Russ from Pathless Pedaled. Um, he was talking about how we don't need 13 speed drivetrains, that uh, it's just a marketing thing, it's a waste, of, a waste of money and just a money grab essentially for new standards and new components and all this stuff. And, and actually I think he's right about that. I think we don't need 13 speed. In fact, we probably didn't need 12 speed. I can see an argument for 11 maybe, um, but 12, I don't think we needed. We already had 1152 on the mountain bike side. So what's 12 for? I have a 12 speed, but uh, my favorite actually is eight speed. I have a couple eight speeds. I've had a lot of eight speeds and nine speeds as well, but eight's just, it works really well, very reliable, very cheap and uh, very lightweight as well. So anyway, but that's beside the point. His, his, his thing was is that we didn't need all these additional speeds and it's boring to be adding on speeds and um, it's just marketing and, and a way to make new standards, to make more money, blah, blah, blah. And I think he's absolutely right about that and I'm kind of sick of it as well. But one thing I wanted to say that I don't know if he didn't think about or, or what, but he probably would agree if he had thought about it or maybe he has, is that there is actually... Despite what he was saying, I think there is actually room for innovation in bicycle engineering. And uh, of course, there is. I think there's actually also room for two areas. There is still room for the racing side and the performance side. Not that he really cares about that at all, I don't think. But um, there, there is room for performance, I still think. But what he might care about and what I actually also care more about is the area of reliability, actually. So one... You know, one thing that I do is these YouTube videos, I get a lot of feedback, a lot of comments, different questions all the time, technical questions, whatever, uh, from a whole range of, of people's, you know, expertise or lack there. And the other thing I do is uh, host bike rides in my city. And it's always the same thing with like newer riders or, or you know, people who just aren't so into the mechanical side of it is they have problems like all the time, like it's a shifting problem, flat tire problem, um, uh, brakes problem. That's like the main three things. I think like the bike doesn't shift right. The brakes rub, the brakes squeal, tires are flat all the time. And, you know, as a, a hobby bike mechanic, um, and obviously Russ is in the same boat, we know how to handle that. It's not that big of a deal, maybe an annoyance here and there, but you know, it's, that's part of biking. But I don't think it has to be. I think that um, what we can do, and I don't see the industry moving this way so much, but I wish they would, is look more at the reliability side because that is what annoys you, like, your, your average person wanting to get into biking is like the, when they go out to ride their bike and the tires are flat, you know, that's just more work and more things they got to know and more hurdles they got to get over in order to get on the bike and ride or when the shifters the shifting isn't working properly it just makes for a, a bad experience when when you can't shift right or even worse when you can't brake right or your brakes are squeaking and it's embarrassing you know i think what we should shoot for is kind of car like reliability so when you hop in your car or even like my car i haven't touch the brakes in like a year or more same with the tires same with everything you just you use it almost daily and it just works and i understand like from an engineering perspective that's not it's easier said than done because these have to be lightweight because it's human power because we're super weak our density of energy isn't as good as is gasoline so we don't we can't afford the overhead of all that extra weight which adds to the reliability but my point is is that if we're going to shoot for improved engineering, you know, if there is room for engineering and what we should, in my opinion, one of the big things we should aim for is figuring out a way to improve that reliability so that people can hop on their bike bicycles, uh, not worry about the brakes, not worry about the shifting, not worry about the tires, not worry about all those other things that, that cause problems and get in the way, especially of like just normal riders who want to use it as transportation. Cause it's honestly, it's a big cost. If you buy a bike for a few hundred dollars or even a thousand dollars, that's fine. That's a one-time cost. But then if you have to start dropping it off at the shop regularly for all these tune-ups, you know, it really adds to the cost and the complication. And I think it just turns people off from riding. They're like, I was going to ride my bike today, but my tires were flat. So I had to take the car, you know, but I guess in some ways we have made improvements with the hydraulic disc brakes. I found through the few that I've had on different mountain bikes, 
Um, they've been very reliable. Like, like my wife's bike we've had since like 2016. I haven't had to do, I don't think anything with the brakes. I think it's the original pads. Now she doesn't ride a whole lot, but I don't even think I've bled them and they're still stopping really well, which is crazy to me. So maybe we are slowly getting there. And I think, you know, that is partly due to some of the innovation. Granted, that was quite a while ago when hydraulic disc brakes started coming onto the scene, but that's just one example. Anyway, anyway, my whole point is, is the maintenance on bikes, I think we should try to engineer that down. And I know there are some, some uh, companies and some people that are working on that, but that's the area of innovation and uh, engineering that I would like to uh, see furthered more. Ultimately, with the goal of just having more people uh, have bikes, be, uh, have bikes, ride bikes, enjoy bikes. Because for me, honestly, if you're not riding a bike, I, I don't know how you can live life. To me, it's like the most fun thing you can do. If I wasn't riding a bike, I, I, I don't know. I have to ride my bike, and I want to share that with as many people as I can. Um, you got to ride bikes to have to have fun, in my in my my humble opinion. I'm sure not everybody agrees with that. So that's all I wanted to say. Just a real quick video, just adding on to what he said. I also agree. 12, 13 speed, 14 speed. It's all kind of. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't like in a racing aspect, but for most people, that's just totally pointless. It, I think 11 is really was, was a good, a good one. Um, for me, even eight speed is, like I said before, eight speed is nice. Um, I'm totally on board with all that carbon fiber. We, I have carbon fiber on my bikes, but totally not necessary. I'm not all about that, but Anyway, my point was is about the uh, the room for innovation. So I would love to see, not that I expect to see it, but I'd love to see the industry focus on on really, really trying to dial in that reliability. Anyway, that's all I have to say about it. Uh, if you have any thoughts or uh, comments, please leave them down below. See ya.